Welcome to the 2020 On-Farm Network results series. I'm Megan Burns, agronomist for the On-Farm Network program. Soybean row spacing trials are relatively new to the On-Farm Network, with this being just our second year conducting this type of trial. Let's get into our observations and results from this season. So soybean row spacing trials are investigating the agronomic and economic outcomes of different row spacing comparisons. In terms of what the actual row spacings at each trial are, that's decided based on what equipment each grower has and what makes sense for them to test for their farm operation. So this year we had comparisons of 15 inch versus 30 inch spacing with one trial having a bonus treatment of 15 inch spacing at a higher seeding rate. And then we had seven and a half inch versus 15 inch comparisons and 10 versus 20 inch comparisons as well. We wanted to investigate the effect of row spacing on canopy closure as well as ultimately on yield. So this map shows the location of our row spacing trials. We had a total of five this year. In terms of what row spacings were compared for each trial type, we'll go through that when we look at the individual results by trial. So last year when we started these trials, we really only assessed yield. Something we wanted to look at this year was actually quantifying the extent of canopy closure and how it may differ between row spacings. So this was incorporated into these 2020 trials and closure measurements were taken at R1, R3, and R5 using an app um, just on, on an iPhone that measures the percent row closure. And this, these aerial image observations are one of the main drivers um, behind including those closure measurements. So not in every case, not for every row spacing trial, but for some of them, you can pretty clearly see a difference in canopy closure between the row spacings. And this was something that we started to notice last year as we looked at our aerial imagery from um, our first year of row spacing trials. So we wanted to add those canopy closure measurements in this season to get a sense of how closure is actually differing between the spacings. Although the focus of increased intensity of measurements in our row spacing trials for this season was on canopy closure, so making um, observations from above the canopy, there are interesting differences to note below the canopy as well. So this is an example from one of our trials this year that compared 10 inch and 20 inch spacing. On the left here from the 10 inch um, spacing image, you can clearly see a difference in plant architecture compared to the 20 inch spacing. So in the narrower spacing, we have less plants per row because we have more rows. Um, you can see that the stems are much thicker and there's a lot more branching in the soybeans as well compared to the wider spacing, the 20 inch spacing in this case, where there are more plants per row, the stems are much thinner and there's a lot less branching going on as well. So this has implications on yield development um, for the crop and it kind of raises questions about the relationship between plant architecture and that development of yield. So we didn't measure anything to do with plant architecture this year, but it was neat to see the differences play out below the canopy, in addition to the effect of uh, row spacing on the canopy itself, which we went ahead and measured uh, this season. Okay, so moving into the results for the individual trials, um, this first trial compared 15 inch spacing and 30 inch spacing at this grower's normal seeding rate of 160,000 seeds an acre to a 15 inch spacing treatment at a high seeding rate, um, which for this grower was 185,000 seeds an acre. You'll see that there's no significant yield difference here between our treatments. And if we look at the results of the canopy closure at R1 and R5, the high seeding rate treatment um, was significantly more closed compared to the 30 inch treatment. Um, but at R3, all three treatments had similar extent of canopy closure. So for this trial um, in the economics table, that increased seed costs with the higher seeding rate um, is represented as a loss in profit per acre because it didn't lead to a significant um, difference in terms of yield. The second row spacing trial is the one that compared 10 inch and 20 inch spacing. Um, here there was a significant yield increase with the narrower spacing, just about uh, just over two bushels an acre here. If we look at the canopy closure data at every stage where canopy closure was measured, um, closure was more extensive um, in the narrower spacing, which is kind of what we would expect to, to see play out in terms of canopy closure measurements. Um, so for our economics here, in the row spacing trials, we haven't accounted for any difference there might be in machinery or operating costs, um, just because that's so operation specific. Um, but this difference in um, profit per acre just is reflective of a yield to yield comparison with this significant increase in yield um, at the narrower spacing for this trial. So the third row spacing trial compared 15 inch and 30 inch spacing. Again, here we have a significant yield increase with the narrower spacing of just over two bushels an acre as well. 
Interestingly here, there wasn't any significant differences in canopy closure at any of the three stages where we uh, took our, our closure measurements for this trial. And again, that change in profit is reflective of that significant increase in yield with the narrower spacing. The fourth row spacing trial was testing seven and a half versus 15 inch spacing. Um, so for this trial, we actually weren't able to capture canopy closure accurately. This field was in a perennial stand prior to being in soybeans this season. And as a result, there was really high volunteer and weed pressure, which you can kind of make out in this true color image here with all that lighter green being uh, the volunteer and weed pressure at this trial. So we weren't able to accurately collect canopy closure data, um, but again, there was a significant yield increase on the narrower spacing um, of almost two and a half bushels an acre here compared to that wider spacing. Um, also, we did quantify weed pressure. So we wanted to see if there was a difference in what weed pressure ended up being later in the season. So we took weed um, pressure measurements at R5, which basically involved measuring um, or counting uh, the number of weeds in a half meter by half meter quadrant in multiple locations in the trial. Um, and interestingly, there was almost double the weed pressure at the R5 growth stage in the wider spacing compared to the narrower spacing. So that's another important element to consider in these row spacing trials, in addition to you know, canopy closure and the efficiency of sunlight capture, the effect that might have on, on moisture. Um, there's also the, the kind of weed pressure um, element to all of this as well. So it's interesting to see that play out um, in this case. So again, we have a, a boost in profit per acre um, represented um, here, which is reflective of this um, significant increase in yield with the narrower spacing. So the final row spacing trial um, was another one comparing 15 inch and 30 inch spacing. Here, there was no significant increase um, in yield, but again, canopy closure was higher um, at every uh, stage where we collected closure ratings um, in the narrower spacing compared to the wide spacing, which like I said, is what we would typically expect to see in those canopy closure ratings. So in terms of what's next for row spacing trials, we would certainly like to continue with them. Um, so we want to continue evaluating the agronomic effects of different spacings in terms of plant architecture, canopy closure and the effect on yield, and then also look into the economic gain in terms of increased income from in increased yield on narrower spacing. So looking at this over time as we accumulate more of a database, how frequently does a narrower spacing result in increased yield? Under what conditions does that take place? Um, and so on. So we have a lot left to investigate with these row spacing trials, and we would love to continue them next year with interested farmers. I would like to say a big thank you to all of our on-farm network participants. If you are interested in learning more, getting involved, or if you have a trial idea, please feel free to contact me at any time. Thank you.